The final item of business, to, uh, business today. Sorry, that's not the final item of business. I'm completely wrong. Um, may I say that the final item of business of this morning's session is members' business debate on motion number 1390 in the name of Richard Lockhead on the standard of mortuaries. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put. And may I ask those who wish to participate in the debate to press the request to speak buttons now. And I call on Richard Lockhead to open the debate. Around seven minutes, please, Mr Lockhead. Thank you, Deputy Presenting Officer. And can I start by thanking members from across all the parties for signing the motion we're debating just now. In March of this year, Frank White, a much-loved husband, father and grandfather, lost his life in a tragic boating accident in the approaches to the beautiful Findhorn Bay, where he spent much of his time sailing. The warm public tributes paid to him illustrate how Mr White was a much-loved and popular member of the Findhorn community. Marion White and her granddaughter Isla are in the gallery today, and I know I speak for all of Parliament by reiterating our heartfelt condolences to them and their family. The day after being informed of Mr White's tragic and sudden death, Mrs White and members of her family were taken to formally identify his body at the mortuary at the former Spiney Hospital in Elgin, used by Police Scotland. What the family experienced there appalled them and made an already harrowing experience much, much worse. The process was insensitive to the needs of the bereaved families. Mrs White said, just two steps for us to be inside that awful place and there was my husband just lying, wrapped in a blanket and throw on a trolley. No warning of what we were entering, no place, no time for composure, just there he was. The facilities were run down and inadequate. Mrs White's daughter, Natalie, said, Spiny can only be described as a derelict collection of buildings sitting on waste ground, overgrown with weeds and in a dismal state of repair. I suffer from MS and was walking with the aid of a stick that day, but there was nowhere for me to sit and rest. I ended up sitting on the ground outside. It was extremely distressing. His other daughter, Sharon, said, it looked like a disused outbuilding we were being taken to, not somewhere our loved one would be. There was no opportunity to say goodbye to Dad, so our last image of seeing him is in a little-used, unkempt building in urgent need of replacement. So, Deputy Presiding Officer, the whole experience was traumatic for a recently bereaved family and failed to adequately respect the dignity of their loved one. And I know that the Minister will want to get to the bottom of how this was allowed to happen, because I'm sure we can all agree that what the White family were put through is wholly unacceptable. Mrs White tells me that after reading an unrelated news article about the general rundown state of the former hospital, and knowing what she had been put through, she decided to act. So the family decided to speak out. As soon as they conveyed to the authorities in Murray their experience, the NHS, the Murray Council and Police Scotland all agreed that this was unacceptable. NHS Grampian apologised. And as a result, Spiney is no longer used for family viewing. And Dr Gray's hospital in Elgin has been used on a temporary basis. And Mrs White is now working with the Mortuary for Murray Planning Group on longer term solutions. I should say at this point that Mrs White found it very difficult to identify who was ultimately responsible for spiny mortuary. And likewise, I was struck by the opaque lines of responsibility. In the case of spiny, we had to speak to the Murray Council, NHS and Police Scotland. So I urge the Minister to address this confusion so that the public and the rest of us clearly understand who is in charge of police and hospital mortuary facilities. There is absolutely no doubt that many families have gone through the same experience as the White family. I've had other constituents who have since told me they were similarly affected by the visit to Spiney Mortuary. But it's down to the determination of the White family to do something about that, that action is now being taken. The White family are also aware that it's a similar situation in other parts of Scotland. They do not want any other family to go through what they went through anywhere. And that's the message from this debate, and that's why Mrs White and her daughter Sharon and Natalie we're very grateful to the more than a dozen MSPs from across the parties that took time to speak to them when they visited Parliament earlier this month. What came to light in Murray is now a national issue, and their campaigns are attracting support from the public and from professionals. I'm very grateful to Stuart Fleming, Professor of Cellular and Molecular Pathology and also Director of the Centre of Forensic and Legal Medicine at the University of Dundee, because he contacted myself and the White family to support their campaign. 
He is responsible for death investigations in Tayside, Fife and Forth Valley and has built new mortuaries in Dundee, Kirkcaldy and Larbert. Professor Fleming has produced a list of standards required for the deceased, the bereaved and the professionals. I don't have time to go through them, but I want to refer to the statement that he provided. He says, I support fully the campaign for an improvement in standards of mortuary provision across Scotland. A mortuary should be a continuation of the delivery of the highest possible quality of care for the people of Scotland, even after death. A mortuary should ensure dignity and respect for the deceased, comfort and support for bereaved relatives and friends, and be a suitable working environment for, for professionals involved in the care of the deceased and the investigation of death. Unfortunately, there is a considerable variation in the quality of mortuary provision across the country, he says. While there are examples of excellent provision, there are considerable numbers of mortuaries requiring significant improvement. So as we can see, the White family's experience in Murray does indeed highlight a national issue. And I do welcome the Minister's recent words of comfort for the White family and for meeting them recently, for listening to their case and for promising to act. It is welcome that Ministers have instructed the, the NHS Scottish Property Advisory Group to look into these issues because as well as having to grieve following the sudden loss of a loved one, the family have indeed found themselves feeling it necessary to campaign and they continue to urge people to contact them via www.mortuaryformurray.com. My constituents have found themselves in the spotlight giving media interviews and visiting Parliament. But none of us should forget what they have been through these past few months and that only strengthens our admiration and respect for the White family. They wish to ensure dignity for the deceased and that people do not endure additional distress during the formal identification of a loved one. The White family's campaign has achieved so much so far. They've achieved changes in Murray, but now they want to see all mortuaries in Scotland inspected and steps taken where necessary to ensure that they all meet an agreed set of 21st century standards that are monitored and complied with, both in terms of the facilities and the process of identification, in line with what we would expect in a compassionate society. So I look forward to the Minister's response to the issues raised and to joining me and other members from across the parties today in paying tribute to the White family's tenacity and determination to ensure that no other bereaved family goes through what they went through at Spiney Mortuary. We now move to the open session. Speeches of around four minutes, please. I call Douglas Ross to be followed by Colin Smith. Thank, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. And could I congratulate Richard Lockhead for uh, securing today's debate and agree wholeheartedly with 100% uh, of uh, his speech. Could I also welcome uh, Marian White and her granddaughter, Isla Robertson, uh, from Forest Academy, down to Parliament today, the second time the family have been down here in recent weeks. Uh, and through their personal tragedy uh, and the experience they have gone through, the strength the family has shown in trying to better the facilities in mortuaries across Scotland is highly commendable. I met with Marion last Friday in Elgin and it was exactly five months to the day since Frank had tragically died. Um, and I, I just wrote down a, a couple of words that I'd read about him uh, in the press coverage following his death. He was a beloved boat builder, a jovial character who liked a good yarn. Uh, the family miss Frank, understandably, but through his death and their campaign since then, hopefully we can see improvements for other families who don't have to go through a number of the issues that Richard Lockhead mentioned uh, in his speech. I don't want to reiterate everything uh, he said about the experience that the family, um, Marion, uh, Sharon and Natalie went through, but Spiny Mortuary could never be considered in 2016 to be fit for purpose. It was built, Spiny, in 1933. It was closed by the NHS 12 years ago. So why did we as a local authority, eh, as a police force eh, and an NHS, think it was right in this day and age to still be eh, using it as a mortuary? Now, things have changed and moved on eh, very quickly since the incident five months ago. Uh, but there are temporary measures in place for viewing at Dr Gray's but the storage of bodies still continues at Spiney, and I have serious concerns about the security of the facility at Spiney. Uh, this has been raised locally in the press, and I think we need to ensure uh, that the security is improved at Spiney, and indeed that we don't just look at the temporary 
uh, replacement uh, at Dr Gray's, but we look for a long-term replacement. Because Dr Gray's in itself is not ideal, uh, bodies have to be moved across the car park into the viewing gallery uh, at the other side of the campus at Dr Gray's. That is not suitable for anyone, and we have to ensure that a better process can take place. I'd also like the Minister uh, to perhaps uh, answer during her summing up where the responsibility lies, as, as Richard Lockhead said. Is it the NHS? Is it the police? Is it the local authorities? And should we have uh, a, an overarching governing body for all the mortuaries within Scotland to ensure that people know if there is an issue, they go to the NHS or they go to the police or they go to uh, the local authority? At the moment, there is too much confusion on this very emotive and personal issue, and I think we need further information on it. I I'd also like to know why uh, there's no inspectorate of mortuary facilities. If there was, spiny would never have been used. It takes a personal tragedy. It takes a campaigning family to bring about change rather than actually addressing the concerns that there clearly were at Spiney by someone going in and checking the facilities. We know there are very good examples across Scotland, but there are very bad examples. Murray has been highlighted as a bad example, but it is not alone. So I think we need to do more to ensure that we are inspecting the facilities to ensure this is not allowed to happen again. Marian asked me to ensure that I mentioned the website, which Richard Lockhead has already mentioned, the mortuary for Murray at gmail.com. Email address is where they want to get the information coming into. They want to hear from more families across Scotland to ensure that we get this right across the country. Uh, Richard Lockhead has also quoted from Stuart Fleming, but I would just finish by reiterating a quote that Professor Fleming said, a mortuary should ensure dignity and respect for the deceased, comfort and support for bereaved relatives and friends, and be a suitable working environment for professionals involved in the care of the deceased and the investigation of a death. Through the White family's experiences following this, personal tragedy, we can only hope that that standard written by Professor Fleming can be replicated across Scotland and therefore their campaign will have made a big difference not only in Murray but throughout our country and I commend them for everything they've done. Thank you. Colin Smith to be followed by Marie Todd. Thank you Deputy Presiding Officer. Um, on behalf of the Labour team can I commend Richard Lockhead for bringing this matter to the attention of Parliament through his motion uh, and also through today's debate. Can I also express my condolences to the family of Mr. White, and, uh, Mr. White in the gallery today for their loss and undue distress they faced as a result of the condition of spiny mortuary. Nobody should have to go through such an experience and I praise the family for the work they have undertaken at such a distressing time to try to secure changes to the standards of mortuaries so that other families in the future do not suffer a similar harrowing experience. Since becoming a member of this parliament, I've had the privilege of working closely with healthcare and social care professionals who dedicate their working lives to ensuring the comfort and dignity of those they care for. But compassion does not stop at the end of somebody's life. Mortuaries and post-mortem facilities obviously serve a practical function, but they are also for some the last place where they see their loved ones and as such hold a unique place in a person's grieving process. It is therefore imperative that conditions of mortuaries are such that the dignity of the deceased is upheld and the distress that families face is minimised. This wasn't the case for the White family. But if anything positive can come from their experience, and indeed, as Mrs White told the BBC, it seems from the experience of other families in other parts of Scotland, it is the fact that this story has brought to our attention the shocking fact that there is currently no specific inspection regime and no guidelines for inspections of mortuaries in Scotland. As members will be aware, under the Public Health Acceptor Scotland Act 2008, mortuaries can be provided by local authorities, by health boards, or a combination of the two bodies. Within the standards for the management of hospital post-mortem examination, there exist standards for hospital staff supporting bereaved families. Specifically, the standards state that the staff working within the facilities must ensure the deceased and the people who have been bereaved are treated with dignity and respect and in accordance with their wishes. Although such standards are welcome, they appear only specific to hospital post-mortems and not across the board of mortuary provision. That needs to change. We need to see standards for all mortuaries that treat the deceased and their families with dignity and also take into account factors such as the faith, cultural values and the beliefs of both the deceased and the bereaved. The Scottish Health Planning Note 20 provides particular guidance on the elements that should be considered in the building of mortuaries. Simple considerations such as 
ambient lighting and thoughtful decoration of waiting areas are suggested, and such additions to all mortuaries would be welcome. The problem at the moment, as highlighted by the White family, is that such standards are not enforceable in existing mortuaries as expe inspection procedures do not exist and this cannot continue. I welcome the proposals from NHS Grampian in seeking to improve spiny mortuary, but such improvements should not have to come on the back of the unacceptable personal experiences of those who have lost a loved one. Facilities that are fit for purpose must be the norm and minimum standards have to be put in place and properly enforced. I therefore welcome the motion put forward by Richard Lockhead and echo the calls of the White family for regular inspections of mortuaries in every part of Scotland to ensure that minimum standards are enforced. I want to finish with the comments of Mrs White, which I read on the BBC website. She said that families who are suffering in difficult and often tragic circumstances should be shown much more compassion than we found. It is vital that at such a difficult time, families should have access to a mortuary that is fit for purpose, where families can feel comforted and where the deceased are treated with dignity and respect. I couldn't agree more, and Mr Lockhead and the White family will have the full support of Labour in seeking to achieve just that. Marie Todd to be followed by Graeme Simpson. Thank you, Presiding Officer. This is undoubtedly one of the rare occasions in, this, in politics where all of us from all parties in the Chamber can unite in common cause. We can unite in thanking Richard Lockhead, the constituency MSP for Murray, for securing this debate and for helping our constituents to bring this badly neglected issue to the attention of Parliament. We can unite in thanking Mrs White, her daughters and their wider family for their efforts to improve standards of mortuaries, not just in Murray, but throughout Scotland. Presiding officer, despite the fact that death is an inevitable part of life, the death of someone we, that we love is one of the toughest experiences we ever go through, and sudden or unexpected death is particularly distressing. In the midst of normal, everyday life, with no hint of warning, the worst possible thing happens and your world is turned upside down. The shock causes strong physical and emotional responses. It can be quite literally gut-wrenching. It can feel unreal and it can be really hard to take in what's happening. But despite this fog in our brains, we create really vivid memories at this time, which become central to our experience of bereavement. I think we can all agree that the experience of sudden or unexpected death is traumatic enough. The experience of making a formal identification should not add to the trauma. If the service is sensitive to the family's needs at this traumatic time, it can help turn the tide of profound grief and make the ordeal livable and may even create some positive memories. I can't be the only person who was shocked to hear about the poor quality facilities which faced Mrs White and her family at Spiny Mortuary when her husband Frank died in an accident earlier this year. All of us expect mortuaries to have certain minimum standards. All of us expect mortuaries to be maintained to a standard that demonstrates care, dignity and respect. All of us expect mortuaries to be sensitive to the needs of families and loved ones and to provide comfort. All of us expect families and loved ones to be provided with a place to recover and compose themselves before they have to face the outside world again. All of us, at the very least, would expect there to be toilet facilities. It's so disappointing that these facilities fell so far short of what we would expect in Murray. And it's really pleasing that the action has already been taken by NHS Grampian to remedy the situation. I admire the White family for campaigning on this issue. I was really pleased to have the opportunity to tell them so when I met them here in Parliament last month with Richard Lockhead. To face their situation and to come through it with a determination to ensure that other families won't have to face the same situation is a credit to them. That determination to turn a desperate experience into a positive change is truly inspirational. And the knowledge that they have already effected change locally and nationally must bring some comfort. And it's a fitting legacy to an undoubtedly much loved husband, father and grandfather. Thank you. Graeme Simpson's the last of the open speeches. Um, can I 
also thank Richard Lockhead for bringing this issue to, to Parliament. Um, few of us feel comfortable when dealing with the practical aspects of saying a final farewell to our loved ones. So it's important to have professional help at these sad times. We expect the process of preparing for burial or cremation to be dignified and undertaken with great care and respect. And in most cases, that's what happens. We don't expect our loved ones to be subjected to a setting reminiscent of a shed in a backyard. But that's, what, that's the experience of Mary Ann White after her husband Frank died in the sailing accident uh, in May. He was taken to Spiny Mortuary in Elgin where Mary Ann, who I also had the pleasure of meeting when she came into Parliament recently, found him lying not in comfort and security but in dampness and squalor. Frank lay on a trolley in the middle of a darkened room, the only thing covering him a blanket and a throw. Mary Ann described the environment as being unkempt, run down and akin to an old garage. It's beyond belief that her husband should have been left in a room that appeared abandoned and unmaintained. And no wonder she described herself as feeling desolate. The bereaved are already in great pain following a loss and it's appalling that this pain should be compounded unnecessarily by neglect from those in authority who should know better. We constantly fight for basic rights of the living, but we're surely entitled to dignity in death too. That's not what this family encountered in Elgin. Every mortuary should have basic necessities in order to effectively comfort, console, and care for the grieving. It would be wrong though to assume that this is a picture seen throughout Scotland. The truth is we simply don't know. But this awful case has shone a light on an issue and it's incumbent, I think, uh, as others have already said, on the government to instigate a review of mortuaries and their conditions throughout the country. Let's find out what the picture is nationwide and then let's have a plan to rectify any failings that we find. It's essential for mortuaries to provide high standards of care and an adequate setting in order to meet the needs of all of us. If mortuaries underperform or fail to do what's expected of them, then it's up to the government to act and promote better standards. And I'm rather like the idea of um, having an overarching body to uh, deal with mortuaries. Having a nationwide inspection of mortuaries will not only highlight areas for improvement, but will also evidence the hard work and commitment of professionals who are getting it right. Good practice must be highlighted, shared and celebrated. Ultimately, improvements in practice can only benefit the most important people at their worst time, the deceased and their grieving loved ones. Mary Ann and her family have been brave to bring their campaign here. It's not an easy thing to put yourself in the spotlight. I thank them for doing so. Their experience may help others and it's up to us to make sure that's the case. I call on Aileen Campbell to wind up the debate. Around seven minutes, please, Minister. Okay, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. I, I too am grateful to Richard Lockhead for tabling this motion and to have the chance to respond on behalf of the Scottish Government. I'm also grateful for the contributions of all speakers this afternoon who spoke with a great deal of compassion. I know everyone here is and was shocked by what the White family described they went. And I know that's how I felt when I heard about it from Richard Lockhead's correspondence and in the media. And in the words of Richard Lockhead, the White family's experience was wholly unacceptable. It's hard to even begin to imagine how upsetting it is to deal with the loss of a loved one in such tragic, unexpected circumstances as those that Mrs White found herself in. To have then been asked to visit the mortuary at Spiny Hospital so obviously in a, such a poor, inappropriate condition was completely unacceptable and compounded their upset, their trauma and their pain. And I would like to pass on my sincerest condolences to Mrs White and her family in the gallery today and to say how sorry I was to hear of their experience. And while I've already met with the family and conveyed this privately, 
I very much welcome the opportunity to do so today in public. And I appreciate the strength that has been shown by the family in discussing their concerns with me. It cannot have been easy, but their desire to make a difference shows remarkable courage and is a true inspiration. The Scottish Government issues guidance on mortuary facilities to all NHS health boards and fully expects all health boards to apply it. The guidance is clear in setting out requirements that viewings take place in appropriately serene, calming and dignified surroundings. Clearly though, this guidance was not adhered to in the White's case and this is troubling and deeply concerning and it leads to many questions. But before coming on to those questions, I should however firstly say that I'm aware that NHS Grampian have been in regular contact with the White family in recent weeks and months and have taken steps to ensure that what happened to Mrs White and her family will not happen to anyone else in the Grampian area in the future. The Health Board has given reassurance at that from this point onwards, all viewings will take place in the more appropriate surroundings at Dr Gray's Hospital and it will not ask any family to visit Spiny Mortuary again. However, I will endeavour to look at, into the issues of security of provision raised by uh, Douglas Ross and make sure that that is uh, carefully looked at. And whilst it is positive that the Health Board has taken action in this case, the White family's experience does, as I mentioned a few moments ago, raise certain questions, and one of which being the extent to which Health Boards all across Scotland are complying with the requirements that we have set out clearly. For that reason, as a first step upon hearing of the White's experience, I immediately wrote to all health boards in Scotland asking what they, that they provide me with assurances that they are complying with the current guidance on mortuary provision. I further asked that if they could not do this, that they give me a detailed plan on how they will rectify this as a matter of urgency. My officials and I will take care to scrutinise the responses received from the health boards. I will press the boards to ensure that facilities are brought up to standard in any cases where they fall short. It will absolutely be a requirement that they do so as quickly as they can and that there will be no excuses. I've also instructed officials to begin a thorough review of the present guidance in order to ensure that they are fully up to date, sufficiently detailed and leave nothing to doubt. Once this review is completed, the renewed guidance will be issued to each Health Board Chief Executive in Scotland. Richard Lockhead. Uh, can I thank the Minister for giving way and in terms of the review she mentions which I, I welcome perhaps if I can suggest that she may be able to find a way in which to involve Marian White uh, and indeed Professor Fleming in that work as it moves forward. Aileen Campbell. Uh, absolutely indeed I, I, will, I was going to briefly mention uh, Professor Fleming but absolutely I think I understand that my uh, officials have met with or have did have made contact with Professor Fleming and absolutely will continue to engage with uh, Mr Lockhead, the White family and anyone who shows a degree of expertise on this uh, uh, incredibly important issue. Um, it is worth noting, however, that the questions the cases raise go far beyond the matters of NHS Health Board compliance. There are other organisations that make use of mortuary facilities and are responsible for their operation and their upkeep. These include large and diverse organisations such as the police as well as each and every local authority in Scotland and of course the private sector. The diversity of organisations involved in this issue causes great complexity. It's also worth considering the fact that this is not simply about the fabric, the fixtures and the fittings of the mortuary facilities themselves. We also need to ensure that family members that are required to visit mortuaries are treated with thought, care and compassion by appropriately trained staff. So it's because of those complexities that a cross-government approach is also required to review and to understand the landscape of provision and identify areas of action and always ensure that organisations that make use of those facilities do so with a duty of care at the forefront of their minds. I do not want to be in a position where families need to go through any further suffering and will use the experience of the White family to inform positive change and bring, bring the clarity that Richard Lockhead eh, mentioned in his opening remarks. For this reason, I can say today that I've begun working with other ministers in the Scottish Government in order to investigate mortuary provision in its entirety across Scotland to fully understand the concerns of Mr Lockhead and the White family and to agree a way forward and to take action. I work in conjunction with the other ministers and with Scottish Government officials to ensure that we make progress on this matter as quickly as possible because of its importance. And I'll be happy to report back to Mr Lockhead and of course the White family as that work continues and indeed Professor Fleming's input will also be uh, crucial. So to conclude, uh, Presiding Officer, I would once again want to offer my deepest sympathies to Mrs White and her family and also say that I'm very grateful for their efforts along with those of Mr Lockhead 
in bringing this matter to our attention at what is a very difficult time for them. I sincerely hope that they can take our action and future action as a tribute to their tenacity and that some small comfort in the intense period of grieving that they are going through in the fact that their efforts have made a lasting difference for everyone across Scotland. That concludes the debate and this meeting is suspended until 2.30pm. <laughs>